afternoon. I'm going to show you real quick here how to take a uh, rigid branded uh, pipe cutter or tubing cutter apart. Uh, you may want to do this if you want to clean it up. A lot of times you can get these used pretty reasonable, but they're usually um, a big gunky mess. Or you may want to change the, uh, the cutter in the thing. And there's not a lot of steps taking one of these apart. And I'll just show you real quick here. Uh, to disassemble that, you're going to need a punch and a small hammer. This little machinist hammer. And I'm using this, uh, this little head off a sledgehammer. I'm going to use the hole in it. Uh, you could use a vise or a couple blocks of wood. On these particular tubing cutters, they've got these pins tapped in here. And on this side, is on the pin is a kind of a little snap ring that holds it in. So it's not a lot of work to, to get one out. You may want to get another block of wood to hold it up. And all you do is just center that up there. Take your punch. You don't have to beat on these. Um, you may want to put some lube on it. And uh, just start tapping. If you're really clever, you can tap that down far enough till it releases the, uh, the cutter. If you're going to just change the cutter, you'd get your new cutter and you'd put a little bit of oil or some uh, grease in here and just snap it back in there, line it up, and uh, you'd go ahead and flip that over. These actually have a little flat ground on them that fits in there. So what you want to do is take your hammer and start tapping it down, get the wheel line back up, and you can just keep tapping it until it starts to line up. And that would be all there was to it if you were going to change the cutter. Let's say you're going to take the thing apart and do a little more work on it. Go ahead. Knock that pin completely out of there. Set that off to the side. Go ahead and knock that pin out of there. Take that roller out the same way you took that cutter out. It just fits in there. And you can go ahead and knock that pin out. And go ahead and take that roller out. I'm going to take a look at all these pins, make sure they're not bent, and make sure I'll show you this up close. Here's the little T-head that fits in that slot, and on here is a little baby snap ring. Make sure that that is in place. Let me pause you here real quick. Okay, sorry about that. And like I said, you want to look at all three of those, make sure they're not bent. If you're ordering parts from Rigid, you may want to order some of these ahead of time. They're not very expensive. The other thing you might want to do is make sure that they, uh, you might want to test fit those in there. Make sure that they fit really well. Okay. Now, if you want to take this apart further, on the back here, there's a slot on each side of this jaw. What you do is you screw the jaw in like you're going to close it. Don't try and do this before you take all this stuff off. It won't close right, and you'll have a little problem. 
The other thing you might want to do is put a little bit of lubricant, some WD-40 or some light machine oil on that screw lead. And you just keep screwing that in until all these slots line up. It's almost completely closed when you do that. You'll see it. When you get it lined up about right, it'll, it'll literally fall down. I don't know if you saw that or not. Then you can turn the jaw back and forth a few times. It'll fall the rest of the way out. There you go. To complete the disassembly, you would back the screw out. I'm not going to do that here. There's no reason to do that. Um, that would be a good time to clean all this stuff off. Uh, it would be a good time to tape off all this stuff and repaint this. I would. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, I would uh, rough all that up with uh, steel wool. You could can soak all this or in some kerosene or diesel fuel. Both of those are pretty inflammable. But don't smoke around it. Be careful. And I'll go ahead and clean all that up. Get a brush. Clean all this up. You may want to polish this uh, this slide right here. To reassemble this, you just go back the way you came. You screw the handle back in, screw it almost to all the way to the edge. You may want to put a drop of oil here, 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 and here. A little bit inside on this slide. And then go ahead and drop that. back in place. You may have to unscrew it a little bit. These things are pretty indestructible and they've made them for quite a number of years. Okay. Excuse me. Once you get it lined up there, you want to hook this notch over this little place on this on the screw. You'll have to turn the screw in and out a few times to get it to line up. If you've lubricated that, it will help this process. same time, you want these jaws to go down over these little islands there. Okay, so it slid back on. Okay, now you want to back this out. And when you back this out, take your thumb and your finger and hold the front down. And you start backing it out. Kind of watch this a little bit. It should just walk back. If you don't hold the front down, what will happen is when you do this, it will it will try and twist on there like that, and you'll get in a bind, and it'll stop. Uh, it'll stop trying to pull back, and you, you could literally break the thing. So just go ahead and push that down. And like I said, slowly walk that back. Keep an eye on it. Make sure it starts to line up. If you've lubricated all this stuff, you'll feel it line up. And you go ahead and open those jaws up a little bit. Try not to get too rough with these threads. They, as you open the jaws on this thing, these threads become more and more exposed. You'd be surprised how many of these I've seen over the years where these threads are really screwed up. Because guys have abused them. Okay, are you ready to put this back together? I put the wheels in first. You can do whatever you like. I put the back wheel in first. Um, you can look down through there and line that up and take your pin and just gently tap that back in there. Once it goes in, you'll feel it and you can start lining it up. Again, there's a flat on there that lines up with this flat in here. When you get close, just slowly line it up and it'll kind of walk its way in. Do the same thing for the front wheel. Just line that up. Start tapping that in. That one in. The reason I do the cutter last is there is a chance, um, let's say you've got this really opened up.
Let's say you've really backed this off and you get this open. And you've decided to put this cutter in first. Let's say you've done this and you're pounding on here and for some reason it slips off. You could hit that cutter with your hammer and break it. <laughs> That's never been done before, trust me. Anyway, the last stage is to go ahead and tap that back in. And again, just walk that around. Here again, when you get close, just line that pin up. If you've lubricated all those pins, that thing will go back together pretty easy. Um, what I always do too is, before I turn this loose, I just take my punch and check that. Make sure those are really seated. And uh, you're done. Go ahead and make a test cut. Make sure it works. Like I said, the lubrication on the shaft, on the screws, won't hurt anything. Police helicopter is coming by to spy on me. That's okay. It's never happened before either. So, there you go. You're ready to go. That's all there is to this. There's not a real lot to talk about. These uh, the rigid brand pipe cutters, and a lot of rigid branded stuff like their pipe wrenches and other tools are pretty well made. A lot of them have been around a long time. You may find one of these that's pretty old, and it's still a serviceable tool. I see these things all the time. A lot of times I clean them up and repaint them. A lot of times they sat and got all gunked up or rusted. Um, you can get them, a hold of them relatively inexpensively. I'm sure a brand new one isn't cheap. Anyway, if you have a question or a comment, feel free to leave them. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, uh, that'd be great. And I'd like to thank all the people that send me an email every day. Uh, I've got more more videos I've been working on on some of the day-to-day -day things. This will probably help somebody, hopefully. If not, let me know. And I'll get rid of it. So now that the police helicopters went over the horizon, and those of you who are afraid of police helicopters have made a run for it, <laughs> I'm gonna bid you a good day. Take it easy.